grown-ups. It's Miss Lisa here from Worthington Park Library bringing you some new ideas for doing school at home. I hope some of these are fun for you and I hope they work for you. Um, normally my goal is minimal effort, maximum time for the kids to be hands-on. So we're going to do a few ideas today based all around our story time theme this week, which is good night. Now you could just do the theme idea is that everybody goes and takes a nap. Sounds amazing. Wouldn't work in my house. I don't know about yours. So we're going to do a few things about nighttime and about getting ready for bed. A few weeks ago, we talked about staying healthy. And if one of the things you talked about was healthy sleep habits, this would be a great tie in to that week. Um, and a few weeks before that, we talked about space and you'll see a few overlap ideas from space week too. Okay. The first idea that I had is a star search, which we live pretty close to the city. So I don't have a lot of stars that we can see from our backyard. But what I like to do is that we make stars and hang them around the house. Now you do not have to necessarily cut out stars. If that sounds like a whole lot of work use a post-it note and just write on it. And that works great. And then you don't even have to worry about it sticking. You can just put it on up. Um, here at the library, when we do this week, I have these lovely laminated stars that I can use. And you'll notice that they have letters on them. And so really what we're doing is not a star search, we're doing a letter search. So as the kids walk around and they find the letters, they write it. Here we have clipboards that we put in on, uh, put these sheets onto, and the sheets have all the letters on them, so the kids can trace the letters as they find them. And then the goal is to find all of the letters. I also have numbers on this one, um, but if you want to just do letters, that would be great. If you only want to do the letters your child's interested in, maybe the letters and their names, um, you can do that as well. I have found that there is just a beautiful combination that happens when the kids are able to walk around and hunt for something. Uh, they are much more willing to try to write. So if you have a reluctant writer, this might be a good way for them to put some things down on paper. It doesn't have to be that they are writing the letter perfectly. It really doesn't. If they are practicing writing and holding a pencil or a crayon, that's great. That's really good practice. I do typically try to push for us to use pencils or crayons because we have to use more muscle to write with them. But if you have a struggling writer, starting with markers works just fine. It, it involves less muscle to be able to write with the markers. I hope that makes sense. Um, if your child already knows all of their letter names, it's a great time to start introducing the letter sounds. So when they find it, they can say what the name is if you're working on that. They can say B, 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 and then if they're really working on letter sounds, you can try to think of something that starts with that letter sound. Um, so that is our first one. I know that's a lot of ideas all wrapped into one, but like I said, make it simple for yourself. I tried to have my daughter cut out her stars, um, so our stars are a little more abstract at my house, but it worked out well. And then when she got tired of it, I ended up cutting out stars, which is why I'm saying probably just put it on a post-it note. That'll work great. Um, it also works really well if you extend the activity with binoculars, if you have any, or even if you have like one toilet paper roll and you can use that as a telescope to try to find the stars, that'll also focus them into the activity a little bit. All right, that's our first activity. I had a lot of ideas with it, I'm sorry. All right, the second one is to do sticker letters. So you can do sticker letters or sticker numbers or sticker shapes. <laughs> I'll say sticker a few more times. Um, I like to make them so they look like constellations, which is a fun idea. If you, if you draw the lines that you want the kids to do stickers on and you can find star stickers, you can use those. I found some star stickers, but my daughter also found smiley face stickers. So mine has smiley face outline and then um, some star stickers in the middle. But if you are doing just the lines and then they are putting stickers along it, they can count how many stickers they've put down. Um, they can tell you what shape they're making or what number or letter. And then just like with the other activity, if they're doing letters, they can work on the sounds and the initial sounds and words. Um, so that hopefully will give you a couple options to extend this activity a little bit. When we're working with stickers, it is really wonderful for our fine motor, for our writing muscles. Uh, because we're having to peel the stickers up off the sheet, which is super tricky. I know. 
and then we're working on applying them where we want them. So it's really wonderful for these, our pincer grip, okay? All right, if your child's really having a hard time, you can try to peel off the outside of the stickers, like the part that they're not going to use, which makes it a little bit easier to peel and get the part that they do want to use. I hope that makes sense. All right, our next idea involves having a globe and a flashlight, but you don't necessarily need a globe. You can find anything that is a sphere. Um, we talk about how spheres are 3D circles, so it's a circle all the way around. I have a globe, this one was a puzzle one that we had fun putting together. If you don't have a globe, like I said, you can talk about how the earth is this shape and show your child with a ball or something like that. And what we do is that we wait until it's dark or we do it in a dark room and we turn a flashlight on and the kids will see that just part of the earth has light on it. So we talk about how the earth rotates, spins around, and how the side on the other side would have darkness. So that is why we have night, that the earth completely goes around once every day. And that's why we have night, light and dark. Um, it works better in a dark room. In here, you're not really gonna see a difference, so I didn't bring a flashlight to show you. But that's kind of the rough idea, is that we talk about the flashlight is the sun, shining it on it. We can see which part gets illuminated and which part does not. I hope that makes sense. All right. It's also great if you do have a globe to kind of show where we're located. And my kids really like to talk about how when it's this time here, what it might look like across the world. They find that really interesting. All right. The next idea I had is to make some moon dough, which is also called cloud dough or moon sand. All of them kind of refer to the same couple of things. The first recipe that you could use is to do one eighth part of oil. So you can use baby oil, you can use cooking oil, whatever you have around, um, to one part of flour. So for every one you do of the oil, you'll do eight of the flour. I don't know if that made sense. Um, it's an eighth cup to one cup. And if you don't want to use flour or you have a gluten intolerant child, you can do one part of conditioner like you'd use in your hair and two parts cornstarch. So if you are trying not to use flour, you can do that. They both work really well. They have a nice texture. It's lots of fun. All right. The next idea is that you can do some good night yoga. There are some fantastic yoga stories that are geared solely to bedtime, which is so nice. So they'll help you to wind down a little bit and get ready for bed. And let's see. The last idea I had is, oh no, not last idea, I have two more, sorry. All right, is that you can make a piece of art that looks like Van Gogh's Starry Night, so you can show them as an example. And you could do it with Q-tips and paint, if that's what you have around. So this was, I, I'm not sure what all of these are. These are stars, I don't know what the rest is. But this is my daughter's example from our Space Week of what she made. This is her version of Starry Night. Maybe these are the bushes in the house. I don't know. So you can make some artwork and using Q-tips is really wonderful again for those fine motor skills. So they're working on stamping it into the paint, stamping it on the paper. If they want to make it a little more Van Gogh, they'll stamp it into the paint and then do a little dash on the paper. Um, they end up being really cute and very individualized, which is lots of fun. All right, and then I don't know if you've read Goodnight Gorilla, but it was one of my kids' favorites, and there's a lots of fun things you can do with Goodnight Gorilla. So if you'd like, after you read the book, you can make a Goodnight Zoo out of Play-Doh, and then you can use Play-Doh and popsicle sticks if you have some around to be like the fencing and the enclosures, and then use some little animals if you have some toy animals laying around, or your kid could make the animals out of the popsicle sticks and the Play-Doh, and make lots of zoo animals, which is lots of fun. Um, and then you could say goodnight to each of them and close them all up and then have them escape. Yeah. Or if you have stuffed animals laying around the house and maybe a set of play keys, you can have your child be the gorilla or you can be the gorilla. And then one of you is the zookeeper locking up all the animals in their closure so they're safe for the night and the other one can come behind and sneak and unlock them all, let them all loose. Um, so that's a gross motor, a whole body game that my daughter used to like to play. I hope that gives you some fun ideas 
and I will talk to you next week. Bye.